Well, I got done with charging. We drove like, you know, 35,000 miles in nine months. Sleeping in the van, hanging out with some of the coolest people on the planet, getting into adventures. I go back to Lawrence and I'm sitting on the couch every day, nothing to do except be on the internet, which is fun for like two days. And then slowly it crept in like, all right, all my peers, the people I've grown up with, the people in my age group who live in Lawrence don't skate very much and they have jobs and families and all sorts of stuff. So I was just sitting there with nothing to do and I'm like, fuck this, I'm buying a van and I'm gonna make another video because I'd rather be going than sitting. <laughs> I really wish I could stop making skate videos, but it's one of those, it's like, my motivation for making skate videos at this point is promotion for both the companies. Like, it's basically marketing that you get your money back on. So it's a return on your investment. And if you got to go and travel around with some of the greatest people I know, you'd want to be on the road all the time too. It's fun, like, even when days are shitty. Like, if it was raining I'm at home, that day sucks. If I'm raining I'm on the road with my friends, it sucks because we can't skate, but it's great because we're having a good time, we're telling stories, we're making the most of it. So if I didn't get to do it with my friends, there's no way in hell I'd still make road videos. I think each person skating should look how they want it to look. I don't think my vision should ever step on the toes of the person who's skating. Like it's nice to like suggest tricks and like be there for positive feedback or to reinforce things, but I don't think it's my thing to come in and be like, no, that's sick, but I don't really want to fuck with that. Like, you should do this. If you don't do this, you're going to look like a goon. Like, unless I want to strap up my blaze and show them why they should be doing something, I don't really have the right to tell them what to do. Oh, I don't. It's horrible. I can't wait. No offense, I'm having a great time filming this video, but I need to stop making skate videos and focus on the brands. It's something where you can see the level, not the level of quality, but like the attention to the brand suffers. Because I'm driving around living in a van. Half the time we're staying in a place, we can't take a shower, there's no internet. Like, how are you going to run a company from an iPhone and sitting, you know, 30 minutes at Starbucks a day? It's just not happening. Living in a van is great. Like, it's one of those situations where I put myself in that position, one, so that we can afford to do more things and two it's more of a, a trial situation for myself like I tell my mom she's like when are you gonna get a real job when are you gonna stop when are you gonna settle down and I don't want to settle down until I know that I've lived as much of my life as possible I've gone all the place I want to go and I've done all the stupid shit I can do and it's a lot easier to do that when you live in a van and drive around the country I joke about it that every time a mechanic fixes one of the problems in our van, a new one happens. This van we've had since uh, September 17th, and it's already fucked up three times. There's multiple things fucked up with it. But when you buy a van that costs $1,500, I always tell my mechanic, this van needs to go 6,000 more miles. Make it go 6,000 more miles, and then it can explode. That's the reality of the situation. You don't want to spend $20,000 on the van because then you're stuck filming a whole video in Kansas City, which I could probably do. Alex finds a shit ton of spots. It's, it's amazing. Shit, if it wasn't for him, I'd still be working at McDonald's. Hands down, like, I won't lie, a lot of the other KFC dudes pulled hard, but it was Alex that kept going. It was Alex that catapulted most of the projects into the limelight. And... <clears throat> if I wasn't afforded, like I said, I'm not good, I'm not very good at what I do, but when you have someone who's got your back like Alex, it makes it incredibly easy to keep doing it. And then once Viberluck started, you know, I had the dream team. And again, it just makes everything easier. Because when you work with professionals, it's completely different than working with amateurs. While amateurs are hungry, and that's great, that goes a long way, Professionals are the ones who are going to give you the name brand. They're going to give you the tools you need. They're going to make sure that the project gets done at the end of the day. And if the project doesn't get done at the end of the day, you're probably not looking at the next project. So, working with Alex has kept me in rollerblading. All my friends now, the people who ride for the companies, they keep me in rollerblading. I got a lot of, a lot of love for rollerblading, but it is a whole lot easier at the end of the day to struggle with what you do 
and with your craft and being on the road and all the bullshit rollerblading puts you through when you have all your friends holding you up. Rollerblading doesn't need anything. Rollerblading needs to shut the fuck up and just do what it does best. And if it does that, and kids stop attacking and berating and just belittling everything about it, and remember that it started as fun and it should stay as fun, then I think the community together can grow instead of this, it's, I don't want to talk about it. Rollerblading's gonna be fine. This is Adam Johnson. You're watching me on the spot. This is Adam Johnson. And you're watching me on the spot? <laughs> Does that one work? Yeah. You're Adam Johnson, you're watching me on the spot. You're Adam Johnson, and this was the spot, and you're watching me <laughs> there. You're Adam Johnson. I'm Adam Johnson, and I'm engaged, dude. <laughs>